Hey everyone, in this video, I will build a conversation agent with a large language model called Find Code Llama 34B. And uh, I will use uh, Streamlit. So, definitely, you need to install a Streamlit in your machine. So, just run these um, initial comment here. Pip install uh, Streamlit, and also you definitely need Transformer. So, you need to install that as well. And um, uh, this is a single Python file. Uh, so, and it's pretty small one, only few lines of code, few util methods, and that's it. You can build your own uh, code agent uh, to which you can ask any coding question and it will answer you. And to run this entire, uh, uh, entire Python file, that is to launch the Streamlit uh, app in the browser, all you have to do is run this single command in the same directory, that is Streamlit run app.py. And app.py is the name of this Python file. So whatever the Python file, you just replace uh, this with that. And the first method I use here is uh, this one, uh, load models. It is a very simple model. That is, it is uh, only job is to load the model. So I include it in within a try uh, and accept block. So a model is uh, whatever the base model that I have defined here at the config. And in this case, I'm using this one, uh, this uh, GPTQ version of the model. And otherwise, it's a standard boilerplate configuration that is uh, device map, auto, trust remote code false, and etc. Tokenizer also the same tokenizer for the base model. And uh, one particular thing is that um, Streamlit provides uh, provides a powerful uh, caching uh, handling mechanism whereby you can uh, uh, implement caching and uh, make your execution faster. But you can ask that why I'm not using the cache resource method from Streamlit to load the model because sometimes um, in the github or some other places you can see that this kind of load models are uh, included or wrapped within the context manager of uh, st.cache resource so the reason that i'm not using here is so uh, streamlit's uh, st.cache and st.cache resource these two methods are primarily designed for lightweight pure functions Loading a large language models like uh, this one, CodeLama 34B, involves complex objects and states which might not be ideally suited for Streamlit's caching. And uh, the model's loading function, this load models, involves initializing stateful objects, that is a model and tokenizer, with potential side effects like uh, downloading model data, setting up uh, GPU or CPU usage, etc. So Streamlit's caching is more effective for functions without the side effects. Further, loading large models can be a time and resource intensive process and caching such a model might lead to significant memory usage which could impact the performance of the Streamlit app, especially when deployed in environments like uh, with, with limited resource. And in production environments, especially with model like CodeLama 34B, which is a huge model, a dynamic resource allocation and management like using a separate model serving infrastructure is often a better approach compared to caching within the app and, uh, and hence for production grade application relying on streamlit's caching for model management might not be the best practice instead using dedicated service from for model hosting and querying them via api calls can be more scalable and efficient approach so due to all these reasons i am not including these entire load models within a st.cache resource method all right, let's proceed. The next one is um, just a small uh, util method just to get the token length. So I'm just applying len tokenizer text and taking the zeroth element. Uh, all right, now I need to uh, I need to have a particular format for the prompt. So this is a default prompt length I'm assigning, and then uh, include this kind of format for uh, for dealing with this model that is find global uh, find uh, find uh, code llama thirty four b. And then this method uh, create conversation pair. So this function constructs a structured representation of the conversation history between the user and the assistant. Uh, this structure is crucial for generating context-aware response in a conversational AI model. This context comes from the conversation history, allowing the model to generate relevant and coherent response. So the function uh, iterates over st dot uh, session state dot messages right here. So what is st.sessionState.message? So, uh, so it's a Streamlit uh, powerful feature that allows you to maintain state across user interactions. When a Streamlit app is running, each user interactions like uh, clicking a button or entering text typically cause the whole script to rerun from top to bottom. 
and this can lead to a loss of state. For example, all variables are reset. And to resolve that situation, we have st.session uh, state. And uh, so basically, this provides a way to persist those values across reruns. So each st.session state is unique to a user session. It behaves like a Python dictionary and can store any kind of Python object. You can set key value pairs in this state, read them and update them. This enables the app to remember information like user inputs, the state of interactions or any other data that should persist across reruns. In the context of your Streamlit app, st.session state is used to store the conversation history in, uh, in the chat application that is uh, in this method right here. So every time a user enters a message, it's appended to the message list in st.session state. And this list then persists across reruns, allowing the app to maintain the context of the conversation and display the entire chat history. So that's what is being done in this line right here. Uh, that is uh, uh, the function iterates over st.sessionState.message, which stores the sequence of messages exchanged in the conversation. The iteration starts from the second message. That is a slice notation of one because the first message is typically a greeting or initial response from the assistant. And for each message, the function extracts a role, whether it's from the user or assistant and the content of the message. And each message is formatted with the prefix that is um, this one, triple hash, uh, user or triple hash assistant and tokenized to calculate its length in tokens. This token length is crucial for managing the total length of the input to the language model because I need to ensure that it stays within the model's token length. Uh, for example, 16,384 tokens for this particular model that we are using, that is code llama 34B. And then if the message is from the assistant, that is uh, this if block right here, it includes a conversation turn, a pair that is a pair of user and assistant message. The temp dict is updated with the total token count of this turn and the concatenated content of both user and assistant messages. If the message is from the user, it starts a new turn. The temp dict is updated with the user's message awaiting the assistant's response. So note the key difference or the key purpose of this if block that is if the role is assistant that is uh, the LLM model itself that means the conversation is concluded that because the LLM has answered but if it's a user that is the else clause here that means the, con the conversation is not yet concluded so temdict is not being reset here but when it's assistant after the assistant has replied and I have tokenized the content and uh, taken the token count of that and appended those things in the conversation history. That means it's a conclusion. So I'm resetting temp dict and turn token length to zero so that I'm preparing it for the next set of conversation. But this resetting is not done in the else block here. Because uh, for messages with a role other than assistant, that is a user message, the code updates the temp dict by setting the content key to tokenized content, that is a user's message. This prepares the same temp dict variable to be used again in the next iteration of the loop where an assistant that is a, an, an LLM response might follow. So that's the whole purpose of this if block. And next, I have another uh, quick little function get prompt with history uh, that will actually build the prompt. So this function is designed to construct a prompt for the conversational AI model here. And this prompt forms a basis of the model's understanding of the current conversation context and guides its response generation. And this prompt serves as a direct input for the model that we are going to use for the response generation. And the function dynamically adjusts the amount of historical conversation included in the prompt based on the length of the current user instruction. This ensures that the most relevant and recent parts of the conversation are always considered by the model. So the first one is current instruction len. This one, uh, it calculates the token length of the user's current instruction. 
then we have max usable tokens uh, this one determines the maximum number of tokens that can be used from the conversation history it's calculated by subtracting the token length of the current instruction the generation length and the default system prompt from the model's maximum token capacity and maximum token capacity is coming from the in from the argument of this function and we have defined the model max length at the very top which is uh, 16000 something token for this particular model that we are using so uh, then uh, this function calls create conversation pairs which we have defined uh, just before here and uh, uh, finally uh, i'm uh, this history is reversed to start processing from the most recent conversation turns and uh, then iterates over each conversation pair in the reversed history that is uh, this loop right here and adds uh, each pair's content to usable history until the accumulated token count that is history len exceeds the maximum usable tokens this ensures that the prompt uh, stays within the model's token limit and usable history is then reversed again to maintain chronological order and then finally creating the final prompt so the prompt is uh, formatted uh, with a system prompt the usable conversation history the current user instruction and a placeholder for the assistance response this structured format helps the model understand the context and the specific query it needs to respond to and the final util method i have is uh, this one generate response uh, this function first calls the get prompt with history uh, this line right here to construct a prompt that includes the user's instruction the prompt is composed by integrating the user's instruction with the conversation history adhering to the model's token limits then the prompt is then tokenized and the tokenized input is then transferred to the CUDA device that is GPU for faster processing and then streamer so a text uh, iterator streamer object is instantiated with the tokenized and the skipped prompt equal to true argument which indicates that the initial prompt should not be included in the streamer's output this streamer is an iterable that will yield the generated text in chunks and i'm also creating a generation k works uh, this will be used later with uh, and this must be a dict uh, and uh, input streamer and max new tokens are the three keys and then uh, for asynchronous response generation i'm making use of the thread module of python so a separate thread is created to run the models generate function asynchronously this is achieved by this model dot generate as a target function to a thread object along with generation k works which includes the input streamer and the max new tokens as a keyword arguments this setup allows the streamlit app to remain responsive while the model generates the response and if you are interested a little bit more on these uh, on this thread here so the target parameter uh, this specifies the callable object to be invoked by the run method of the thread so in python multi threading allows multiple parts of a program to run concurrently each thread runs independently and can execute different parts of the code simultaneously so when you create a new thread you need to specify the function it will execute this is where the target parameter is used the target parameter in the thread class specifies the function that the thread will execute so when i say target equal to model dot generate means that the generate method of the model object will will run in a separate thread when that thread is started using thread dot start the run method of the thread is called this method in turn calls the function specified in the target parameter which in this case is model dot generate the arguments required by model dot generate are passed through the kworks parameter ensuring that the method has all the necessary information to execute properly without multi threading calling a model dot generate directly in the main thread would block the entire execution of the program until the text generation is complete and this would make streamlit app unresponsive so this is the main reason that we are using asynchronous uh, execution here 
and after the thread is started uh, the function enters a loop uh, with this block right here that is i have a context manager here st.mt and then idx new text and i'm enumerating over the streamer object so this function enters a loop to collect and concatenate the generated text for each chunk of new text produced by the streamer it's appended to generated text variable and uh, this particular part of the string that is uh, with a uh, with the forward slash and s this token denote uh, it denotes uh, the end of a sentence or stream in some models uh, this is removed using re.sub and uh, the updated generated text is written to the streamlit interface with st.write generated text all right and now finally we come to the main method here so uh, here uh, uh, we are using these st dot session state again and as i discussed that it's a way streamlit manages session state across multiple runs so the initial message is a dictionary that we are defining here that if the message key is not already there in st dot session state then i am creating that and creating that with this uh, particular dictionary so we have uh, two keys role and uh, the content so uh, after that the method uh, iterates over st dot session uh, state dot messages displaying each message in the chat interface right here and for each message a container that is st dot container is created within this container st dot chat message is used to format the message based on the role either user or assistant and st.write is then used to display the message content and uh, we are handling the user input so we have defining here uh, uh, that is user input equal to st.chat input uh, that captures a text input from the user this function creates a chat input box on the streamlit interface where users can type their messages if there is user input, the input text is uh, appended to st.sessionState.messages as a dictionary with the role user and the user's content. And if there is user input indeed, then this method to generate an append response is called. And this function is responsible for uh, generating a response from the assistant based on the user input. And inside generate an append response, the function a generate response uh, this one right here is called which generates the assistance response text using the relevant model whichever we are using this response is then appended to st.sessionState.message and uh, finally uh, it's important to note that streamlit apps are reactive meaning this main method that is uh, this one now uh, which is what we will finally run when we run the file within this uh, within this uh, syntax here so this uh, main function will run from top to bottom every time an action occurs like a uh, user submitting text so this reactivity is why the app can dynamically update the chat interface with new message and response and the conversation history is maintained in st.sessionState.messages, ensuring that the entire chat history is visible and persistent during the user session. This approach allows for a continuous conversation flow between the user and the assistant. So that's uh, very much it. Uh, you uh, just need to run this entire file with this command streamlit run app.py and um, replace this app with the name of the file and immediately you will see a browser uh, window will get open and this app will start running with an input box and the input box is for you to put your question you can ask any uh, coding question there and you will see the answers so that pretty much wraps up this video and uh, do stay tuned i'm going to do many more similar videos over the recent coming weeks uh, thank you very much for watching see you in the next one